Whether you're a speed puzzler or a casual puzzler, there's always something that you can do in order to level up your puzzle game. That's what I've been focusing on in the last few weeks in order to get ready for the Great Canadian Puzzle Challenge. So let's take a look. Hi, I'm Sandra from The Puzzling Canadian and welcome to my channel. It's mid-September and the puzzling uh, community around the world is buzzing with anticipation for the World Jigsaw Puzzle Championships. Um, I will not be participating in that event, but I will be participating in, in the Great Canadian Puzzle Challenge uh, that will be held on October 1st in Georgetown, Ontario, here in Canada. If you've seen some of my other videos, you will know that I am not a speed puzzler. I cannot compete with those puzzlers who are going out to the World Jigsaw Puzzle Championship. They are top notch. However, I do want to improve and I do want to give speed puzzling a try. So in order to improve my timing, I have decided to uh, take a, a training technique from the sporting world called functional training. So what is functional training? Functional training is when you do exercises that mimics the movements of your specific sport. Um, it also helps you improve your performance by targeting those certain skills that will make you better at that sport. So uh, if you watch the original Karate Kid movie back in the day, you would have seen this concept when Mr. Miyagi asked Daniel Sun to wax on and off. He was training them to do a specific uh, repetitive motions to improve that skill which in turn would improve his overall performance so i'm using that same concept and just applying it to puzzling my plan is to look at specific areas of speed puzzling that i am the weakest and then targeting those areas and trying to improve those specific areas so i'm not going to be doing like a lot of 500 piece puzzles over and over again i've decided to do smaller piece counts in the beginning and then focus on certain areas that I need to improve using smaller piece counts. And then eventually I'll work up to doing 500 piece puzzles. Here are five areas that I've decided to focus on in order to improve my speed puzzling time. Puzzle training number one is flipping and edges. We've all seen uh, the speed puzzlers dump that puzzle on the table and then flipping those pieces over like crazy. For some people, they just go right at it and then other people, they sort or pull out the edges. So I wanted to focus on pulling out the edges and flipping as quickly as possible. So what I did is I went to my uh, puzzle collection and I pulled out these 100 piece puzzles. These ones, I have a few of them. They are New York Puzzle Company and they're really nice images. So I pulled out a few of them and I would just dump them on the table and then time myself quickly flipping them over and then once and separating the regular pieces with the edges pieces so that's what i did then i would see how quickly it would take me to do the edges and then i didn't complete the whole puzzle i was just focusing on dumping flipping and then i moved on to another uh, image um, in order to do a variety there. So that's what I was focusing on in order to get the speed of flipping the pieces. Puzzle training number two, identifying pieces quickly. So on a regular basis, when I'm doing a puzzle, if I get stuck, sometimes I fixate on that one area. Speed puzzling, you can't do that. You have to try to find those pieces as quickly as possible. If you're stuck in an area, you gotta move on to another area. So I was trying to practice that skill of assembling pieces uh, quickly together. And I did that by picking this puzzle here, Springbok puzzle that has 70 pieces and in each of these puzzles and there's six of these mini puzzles. So what I did was I did one at a time and I poured the pieces out on the table. I then started assembling as quickly as possible without looking at the image because I felt that that would force me to look at the pieces quickly and just try to find what goes together. So I like this strategy because I think it's helping me look at pieces quickly and not being fixated on one area. So um, I liked doing that. I probably will now do it with more with other puzzles, maybe like 200 piece count, 300 and move my way up. But uh, from all those puzzles, the one that had the best times were the firecracker puzzle and the ice cream one. And then the other ones, the one that was the most difficult, it took me the longest was the balloon puzzle. I didn't think it would. Um, but that bottom section is what slowed me down. The balloons putting together was pretty good. Those strings at the bottom then kind of um, slowed me down a little bit. So that is what I did to focus on identifying pieces quickly. Puzzle training number three is dump and go. 
if you've seen some of my other videos, you know that I'm a very organized puzzler. I need to have all my pieces spread out, laid out um, um, nicely so that I can see them. And that's going to be a problem when you're speed puzzling because you don't have the space and you don't have the time to do that. So I have to get used to just dumping and looking at all that chaos. So I decided to start off with smaller piece counts, 200 and 300 pieces. Because I think if I did it with 500 right away, I think my brain would be overwhelmed and then I'd get stuck and, and frustrated. So I started off with these type of puzzles. So this is a 200 Ravensburger puzzle um, and it's called Umbrella. And I did, and they have some 300 piece puzzles like this also. So that's what I'm using to practice. And I just um, dumped it, flipped it over and started working on it. And um it was a, a little challenging because you're, you, I, my eyes don't know where to look. There's so much going on, but I need to practice this more. My timing for this puzzle was 35 minutes and six seconds. So clearly not impressive timing. If you take a look at last year's winner of the World uh, Jigsaw Championship, Alejandro, he did it. Uh, the 500 piece puzzle i think in 34 minutes so i am nowhere near competitive on an individual level but i will continue to work on it and get used to this uh technique puzzle training number four limiting space so on a daily basis i usually puzzle on a much larger table on my dining room table and it allows me to spread all my pieces but in competitions we all know that the puzzle tables are smaller so i, I make sure i try to uh, practice in a smaller table so I can get the feel of the competition. So I'm using this smaller IKEA table that I have. So when I'm using, for example, the dump and go method, I do it on that table so I can get the feel of all the crowdedness of all those pieces in a small little area and see if I can work on that puzzle in that limited space. Puzzle training number five, puzzling upside down. I will be participating in the team event. So depending on uh, the size of your puzzle, when you're doing team events, usually there's going to be two people who are going to be doing that puzzle upside down. If the puzzle is small enough, you could do it sideways, but sometimes you're going to be doing it upside down. So I wanted to get used to that in case that's what happens to us. So I have taken the opportunity on several times, just flipping my puzzle around so I can get used to working it from a different angle. And I think that's also helped me um, work on the other training uh, skill, which is identifying pieces. So I'm not relying on the box. I'm just uh, trying to identify pieces and putting them in certain sections. Those are my five target areas that I decided to work on on an individual level. Now I will be a uh, part of a team. So in addition to practicing individually every week, I have gone and met up with my team and we have spent some time practicing together. And we've uh, talked about strategy. We worked on different types of puzzles so we can get used to different uh, things like things that are dark, things that are light, things that are very busy. So we, we've tried to add a variety of puzzles in order to improve. And I've enjoyed our meetings together. It's been a lot of fun. I've learned a lot of things and I enjoy our, our puzzling discussion on a weekly basis. Now, I'd love to know if you have tried some of these training techniques in order to improve your puzzling skills, or maybe you have some other uh, techniques that I can use in order to improve my individual speed time. Thanks for stopping by my channel and viewing this video. Um, if you want to learn more about the Great Canadian Puzzle Challenge, I, I encourage you to check out my friend Russell's YouTube channel. It's called Puzzling in Two Worlds. And Russell is one of the coordinators of this event. And he has ha released a video um, just a while ago explaining what's going to happen during the day, the rules, the regulations, how everything's going to unfold. So if you're curious, I'll leave the link below. You should check that out. Now the event is quickly approaching, so I think I need to go back and do some more practicing. So until next time, happy puzzling.